Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Big surprise for you tonight. Oh, yes. You know why? I really like the way the Greeks sort of live their life. You know, sitting in a taverna late at night. That would be a tavern, by the way. <laughs> oh, he's speaking Greek already. <laughs> you know, a little pastry, a little ouzo, a little music, a little more ouzo. And all of a sudden, it's oopa. Yeah. A lot of dancing, right? And Greek food is much like the Greek life. It's fresh, delicious grilled fish, flaming cheese, and rich sweet desserts. Oh, yes. Tonight I thought we would create a little Greek menu. And speaking about music, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live. <laughs> Little Uzo, little music, little dancing. Sounds good. We're going to do uh, some really, really good stuff tonight. It's going to be a taste of grease tonight, folks, right here on Emerald Live. Yeah. Big show for you tonight. Yeah. I love Greek food. Oh, oh man, yeah. me too. Really, really, really. You know, people just think it's like that phyllo wrap things. Oh, yeah. Spenacopia, right? It's more to it than that. Right, right. A lot of eggplant, mm -hmm. a lot of lamb, a lot of fish. Nice. Love that. Let me show you what's on the menu tonight. Here's what's on the menu tonight. Oh, yeah. It's a big fancy, <laughs> fancy show here. <laughs> Saganaki. Doesn't sound Greek yet. Japanese. I'm working on it. <laughs> Saganaki. Eggplant slippers is what we're going to do. And then a wonderful Greek-style grilled fish. We'll see what we're going to use. Maybe some branzino, maybe some dorad. And then meatballs with lemon sauce, which is an absolute classic. Either it is an appetizer or as an entree. And then these fried dough. Go ahead, try to say that. Deep fried dough. That's right. It's exactly what it is right there. It's exactly. You got it. Right on the money right there. You got it. They do this Saganaki using this Kasseri cheese. So it kind of reminds me of the texture of um, maybe like a cheddar. It's a sheep's milk cheese, though that they use, and it's one of the oldest Greek cheeses. They say that this cheese and also Kasseri and feta cheese have been around about 6,000 years. Doesn't look like it, but... <laughs> so the whole thing of what we're going to do, folks, with this Kasseri cheese is we're going to take a block of this and we're going to cut it into about four portions. Or maybe more. Then, the next step. We put it in this sort of non-reactive pan. And a little Greek brandy. Got to make it happy. <laughs> so. Wow. Well, you got to make it happy. <laughs> Depends what happy camp you come from. <laughs> See, I'm in the happy, happy, happy camp. Which reminds me. <laughs> Let's get a little happier. All right. So uh, you let that marinate in the icebox. That would be the refrigerator. 
And um, have you ever had this, Doc? Have you ever had fl flame and cheese? No. Saganaki? No. Oh, it's really amazing. I remember uh, we had a bunch of this stuff. We were up in Detroit a couple of years ago, and we went to Greek town there. Right. Phenomenal. Man. So now that it's happy, cover it, happy, happy. The next thing that you do now is we've got to fry it, and then it gets flamed. Oopa. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to start with some pita bread on a lightly olive oil grill, because I'm going to serve it. When we come back, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like when it's flambéed. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc in. <laughs> Welcome back. Emma Lagasse here, doing a little taste of grease tonight. My mouth's watering right now. All right, pita bread's ready. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take kasiri cheese inside of flour. Then we're going to take some butter in the skillet. Now, if your pan gets too hot, the butter's going to burn. So that's why I'm just slowly bringing it up to temp here. Now I'm sort of bringing the temperature up. Oh, yeah, and you want to dredge it in this flour. And then what we'll do, we'll start cooking the cheese. Kasseri cheese. And it tastes like a, a lot like feta cheese. Now, I don't want to throw that brandy out. <laughs> oh, no. It's Greek brandy. In it goes. So you want to cook this for about two minutes on each side. While that's happening... We're going to go and cut the pita bread up now, which we'll use as a garnish. Beside, we'll serve this with olives. Now, it's about two minutes on each side. We flip it. Oh, look at that. Flip it. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now we turn the heat up. And then it's like, why waste this, right? Why? Oopa! Now we take the pita bread. Why waste it, right, Doc? <laughs> I like that. Oopa! <laughs> so to get things started, you get the cheese like this now. Take it out, just like that. I mean, how smart is that? Fried cheese. <laughs> Flambéed. Come on. It's brilliant. Take the pita bread, and we'll do some pieces like that. Serve that around with the olives. And then...
Everything all right back there, folks? <laughs> then we'll do a little garnish with some lemon slices. And then basically, that's it, folks. There you have it. Suganaki right there, right? Are you game? All right, your game. All right, here's, here's generally the drill, okay? You get a piece of pita bread, you get a piece of this cheese, suganaki, right on there. A couple of olives, maybe one slice of the lemon so that you can just go, uh, uh. all right? Here we go. Don't worry, you're only in front of, you know, <laughs> How many millions of people? I'm ready. I'm digging in. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm digging in. Go ahead. Authentic. I'm sure. Go ahead. We're Go waiting. Ahead. We're waiting. waiting. <laughs> Any time now. I'm going. I'm going. Mmm. Good? Mmm. Good. Delish. Now you have to shoot that back. Yeah. Amazing. See, we played all this stuff, but we never get the real reaction. And today, I just said the heck with it. <laughs> now, eggplant. Check this out. We're going to uh, cut the eggplants in half. And then what we're going to do... Wait till you see this dish. We're just going to take the eggplant, take a fork, and we're just going to... A little salt. And then what we're going to do in some oil is we're going to start frying this eggplant. You with me? All right. Be careful. Hot oil. Don't want to renovate the kitchen. Now, in that skillet back there, we're going to add some olive oil and some ground meat. You could do beef, you could do lamb. We're gonna stop browning that. Once that gets brown, we're gonna add onions, we're gonna add tomato, and we're gonna add retsina. It's a Greek wine. It smells a lot like, um, like pine trees. Oh, I'm not making this up. <laughs> oh, no. And then in this pan here, I'm gonna start making a roux with butter and flour adding milk to it to make a bechamel sauce. Got the eggplant, got the meat mixture with the sauce, got the bechamel. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Doc Gibbs! here we got the roux butter and flour we want to get it to that blonde stage right here because we're making a bechamel sauce now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly start adding the milk here now you won't know it's full thickening power until this comes to a boil to be sure as you can see that I had a spoon a wooden spoon to make the roux. Taking that roux off now, making sure it's all off. Now, real quick, what I want to do is just take a whisk 
making sure that there's no lumps. One's hot, one's cold, or you're going to get lumps. So the milk was cold. Meanwhile, the meat browned. I added the onion, salt, and pepper. And also, the eggplants are frying in the oil, as you can see. I'm going to turn them off now. <clears throat> I'm going to turn them off. And basically now what we're going to do is let these cool a little bit. They should be really fork tender. You see how that is right there? <coughs> so now I got some eggplant oil. I don't waste that. All right, so now we get the eggplant out. We're going to let this drain a little. Turn off the heat. Now, to the meat mixture. We're going to add some tomato. And a little retzina, the Greek wine. Little pine box smell. Oh, yes. All right, so now we're going to let this kind of cook down. Our bechamel is on as well. Now, while that's cooking, bechamel hasn't come to a boil yet. Don't know how thick it's going to be. Move this back. All right, get the whisk out again, making sure no lumps. Now, let me show you some ingredients over here now. We have that cheese again that we grated, okay? It smells a lot like Parmesan, really, but we grated it. That sheep's milk cheese, parsley. This is the cheese grated. A couple of eggs. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. Now, the thing that you want to do is you want to start taking the eggplant when you can handle it. Make sure it's dry real good. And then we're going to make like slippers. Oh. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to just go around with a paring knife, not through the skin. And what we're going to do is we're going to start eliminating some of the insides of the eggplant. Now, don't waste this. Oh, no, baby. All right, so we're going to make these slippers. We're checking on the bechamel. Here it is. Look, it's come up to a, a boil now. Now it's, we know how thick it is. It's a too thick. We could add a little more milk to it. I'm going to temper a little bit of this into the two eggs and add it back in here. So now I got the slippers, the cheese, the parsley, the bechamel, and the meat mixture. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Gassi here doing a little taste of grease tonight. My mouth is watering. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab Band. Yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Emma Lagasse here doing a little taste of grease tonight. My mouth is watering, absolutely watering right now. Can't take it anymore. <laughs> the meat mixture, it's been simmering. 
Now what we want to do is taste it. That's what it's all about. Does it need more salt? Does it need more pepper? Uh-huh. Perfect. The two eggs, I took a little bit of the bechamel, put it in there, about a cup, tempered the eggs, put the eggs back in, look. Then I turn the heat off. It's almost like a custard. Look how thick that is. Okay? There's a reason for my madness. Now, to the meat mixture. I'm going to turn that off. Take that eggplant that we dug out. And that we drained. Done. That's a knife. I'm going to overlap the board here so I don't get it all over the place. Why waste it, right? Going to add this in here now. Oh, yeah, watch this. Now, you take the slippers. We go over here, mixed up. We bring the slippers over. Now what we do is we take the eggplant meat mixture and in the slipper it goes. Right in there. Right in there, baby. <laughs> Fill them up. Oh, yeah. You could put this over a bumper of a car and it would taste good right now. <laughs> This is good. So now that that's in here, now we take the Kasseri cheese. <laughs> little parsley. Sometimes they'd add a little bit more lemon, like a lemon in there. Totally up to you. Now, we go over with that thickened bechamel. Three hundred and seventy five degrees. Add a little bit more of the Kasseri cheese, and it goes in the oven. Are you with me? About 30 to 40 minutes later, this is what it looks like. Check it out. However, we need to go up another notch. So now that the bechamel has kind of worked its way into the meat, I come back with a little, uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 you with me? You can put it back in the oven if you want, but basically, this is before, this is after. Siri cheese. How I would plate mine. You go in there for one of the eggplant slippers. Put a little bit of that cheese. This is a wild dish coming up here. It seems very simple. It's this um, meatballs, but I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to say this in Greek. Oh boy, I can barely speak English. Never mind Greek. Avgo lemono. Alyssa, is that right? Yes. Good job. That would be the culinary guru back there. 
Argo Limino. What it means is like it's lemon and eggs. This is a wild thing. Here's how they start. A couple of eggs in a bowl. Whisk them up. I'm using beef, lean. I've also seen it where it's been with lamb. Onion. Fresh parsley. Cooked rice. I mean, come on, that wasn't so difficult. Then you got to go in there. I mean, use a spoon. When I, come on. Give me a break, will you? Now I got the meatball police out there. So the point is, when it's all incorporated, lots of onions, correct. I, I don't know what it is. It's just, I guess it holds up to the lemon. It's really good. Where do you see this? All right, so now you get them and you make meatballs however size you want. Small, medium, large. Salt, pepper would work in here. Lots of onion. But here's the thing. They bring up, they bring up this water. Like, who would ever think? Okay. And I've been told by some Greek families that sometimes there they would actually use a little water from the sea. Okay. At least it's seasoned. <laughs> I can live with that. So now, you get all your meatballs going. Clean up, clean up. <laughs> then, you get this water simmering like this. And then what they do is they slowly start dropping the meatballs in here. Yeah. You with me? Okay. So we're going to get the meatballs in here. Whoa. Whoa. Hang on to your hats. All right, so now we get these going in here nice, nice. And look, folks, it's simmering. It's not boiling. Use your knob. It's on medium, medium low, this thing. <laughs> so while that's happening, another fantastic thing that's so simple that they do is work out of the sea. There's this fish that I'm really like, right now, we got it on our restaurant menu at Delmonico in New Orleans, Branzino. It's a Mediterranean sea bass. It's becoming very, very popular now here in the States. This is what it looks like. If you can't find it, you could use some sort of other bass. I guess you could use trout. You could use Dorad. Just make sure it's fresh. You know? It shouldn't, fresh fish shouldn't have any odor. You go buy a fish, piece of fish, pick it up, smell it, and it stinks. I run. <laughs> Now, good olive oil. Mm -hmm. Salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pepper. Now, I get a lot of this WWW emerald. My fish sticks on the grill. What do I do? Call Martha. <laughs> She's a friend. She would relax. So you want to, for it doesn't stick, you got to oil it. They don't oil the fish all the way through. They wonder why this sticks, that sticks, this, because it's not oiled up. Now the fish is nice and oiled. We go right on the grill with it. And then we oil the other side. And when we come back, you'll see the meatballs in the Branzino. Stick around. That's it.
hear my live band. Yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. Welcome back. Welcome back. Little Greek food tonight. Okay, Branzino. Hmm, Mediterranean sea bass. See, look, we turn the side over. I don't know where we got off the turnpike when it comes to grilling fish. We talked about it being oiled properly. Okay, we don't have any marinades in this yet. Oil, salt, and pepper. That simple. We're going to add some, but right now we got to cook the fish first. Okay? Oil, salt, and pepper. Wow. And I don't have the grill jacked up to the moon. It's hot, but it's like I don't have to worry if I'm going to burn the neighborhood down because it's so hot. I don't know where we got off the uh, pike here. So now, we're gently grilling that fish. Back to the meatball soup. Now, once the meatballs are cooked, we go in there, take them out. This is either used and served as an appetizer and or a main course. Some folks will tell you that you have to go and strain this broth. Some people say, why? So if you want to strain it, you can strain it. It's only got, like, pieces of the onion and the parsley in there. Now, once all the meatballs are out there, we, now we jack the heat up. And then to finish it, we got five egg yolks. And to the five egg yolks, we're going to add the juice of two lemons. Oh. Branzini has a little bit of that oil smell like Pompano does, but it's not strong flavored. Really a delicious, delicious fish. Now to the soup. We go in here. The egg and the lemon. Now, if you boil this, of course it's going to get curdled. So they don't really boil it. What they do is they're just bringing it up to temperature. We're going to taste it now. Because let's face it, it's water. We started out with water. How does your water taste? <laughs> Pretty bland. So for me, I need a little salt. Maybe I'd have, like, some chives in here. Then I need fresh ground pepper. Lots of it for me. Then, once that is happy and you're pleased with the taste, again, don't boil it. Basically, this is just served like this. They'll take... Let's say a little three or four of these. Let's say three. And then they'll take the broth. That simple. There you have it, folks. Okay? That simple. The Branzini. Real quick, the Branzini, fresh lemon juice, no seeds. Then before I go throw these lemons out, I just get whatever juice is left and just hit them before I'm going to take them off the grill. To the lemon juice, salt. Pepper. They love fresh oregano.
fresh parsley. And I just kick it up another notch. What we're going to do is we're going to just take a little bit of oil. Good Greek olive oil. You with me? Yeah. Now, we take easily, take the branzino off gingerly. Gingerly. One. Gingerly. Two. Gingerly. Three. Hey, and they didn't stick. I wonder why. Now we take the flavor right over the branzini like this. And now you got some beautiful fish. You just go right down there, baby, with a loaf of bread and a bottle of Greek wine and be happy, happy, happy. There's a beautiful dessert called deep lace, which is a Greek donut, if you will, with this lovely syrup made with honey. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Back in. the grease tonight i got some uh, some greek coffee on we'll come back and talk about that in a second before i make the glaze for these uh deep lace these donuts basically flour sifted baking powder and salt that's the dry ingredients in here the wet ingredients gets a little egg sugar whisk that up it's almost like making a pasta dough now what you do is you go in here and make a well. Inside of that it goes. And you begin to start making this incredible egg dough. Then they shape them like bow ties. Cut them in strips, shape them like bow ties. Then in about 360 degrees, they'll begin to start frying them. How's the branzino? Very good. How's those meatballs? <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> Still on the fish. <laughs> oh, smart. Enjoy. <laughs> so we're going to start frying these up. Now, to this, just like a donut, got to turn them around. While that's happening, we come over to the water that I got simmering on, and we add honey. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, can you imagine? So we got honey in here now. And then basically, very simple, some nuts and some cinnamon. We'll come back to that in a second. Now, they're frying up like any donut. We got to turn them around, turn them over. So they get golden brown on both sides. Got quite a few in here right now. You put them right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. So we're going to fry them up real good. Turn them around. If you're doing this on the stove at home, as you can get, as you know, the recipes on foodnetwork.com, go over to the Emerald page. If you're doing this at home on the stove, you don't want to have the oil more than about 50, 60 percent in the pot. Because every time you fry, it expands. So unless you want to renovate your house. And have a little patience. You know, they take a little time. Once they're cooked, we'll drain them real good. 
Oh, yeah, eh? <laughs> now, to finish these up. Basically, you get a little bit of cinnamon. And then you get a little bit of that honey syrup that you made. And then you kind of just, I pour a little of that honey syrup in here. Shh. Shh. Then we'll put a few of these here like that. Oh, yeah, babe, a few nuts. Then for me to finish it, just bam, 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 bam. I'm going to have a little Greek coffee right here. I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody.